You may have some feelings of anxiety about a, a test that you have to take or an oral argument that you have to give in an appellate court. You see that anxiety arise and let that feeling, observe it with interest and curiosity and let it go and come back to be in this room together. It's not, it, it sounds, it so, the instructions are quite simple, but putting them in practice is not so easy. So let's, let's try that together. It's different from the way we come to some lectures. There's always a temptation if the talk is getting a little slow, if you're flagging, if your energy is low, is to pull this out of your pocket and just take a look and see if you've got a text message that might, might be more interesting than what's going on in this room. <coughs> but because we're here to talk about mindfulness and to, and to try to practice it, we'll leave this in our pocket. Note the thought, note the impulse to reach into your pocket and to pull it out. And then say, no, I, 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 I'm going to let that impulse go and I'm going to come back and, and refocus and re in, 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 in this situation. Um, <clears throat> uh, I appreciated Clarcha uh, inviting us to do a, a minute of meditation in order to let go of the rush and the hurry and the confusion, whatever you had to go through. I'm sure it wasn't easy for anyone in this room to get here at 3 o'clock and, and to participate to participate in this program. And it's a good idea when you move from one activity to another to just take a minute to focus in on that. But I want to, I want to invite you to take a few more minutes of meditation because that's what we're, we're here to talk about. Mindfulness is a particular kind of consciousness about how we want to be in each particular moment. Whether we're interviewing a client, presenting an argument to a panel, or for a judge to be announcing a decision, we all have opportunities which we can keep going another train of thought while we're doing that activity. Or be thinking about the next activity while we're doing this one. What we're going to do is try to be here for just this activity at this time. So I'm going to invite you to do a brief meditation with me. No more than five minutes or so. And for some of you, uh, this is a routine practice you've done it many times. For others, I suspect it's the, it's the first time you've ever uh, done this. I can remember very vividly my own first time when I uh, was asked to close my eyes and focus on my breath and observe my thoughts and let them go. And it seemed to me extremely foreign and challenging. I grew up, actually, in the, uh, uh, my father was a judge. And um, he was a, a, a very brilliant and traditional judge. And he wanted, and, and he wanted to, I was raised to think like a lawyer and to engage in even our family dynamics like a lawyer would. To be clear, to be precise, to be analytically sound, all of this over the dinner table. And to hold my emotions out of our conversations. He would as a judge, would come home and tell us about an interesting point of law that had, raised, had been raised in his courtroom, or an interesting conflict in a, a, the testimony of two witnesses. And he would invite my brother and me, when we were, I was 13 and he was 16, to give him advice and to uh, comment on how to resolve a factual dispute, or how to apply a rule of law in a contested situation. So I came to law school already having been primed with that style of thinking. And when they said, we're going to teach you here to think like a lawyer, I was confused because really that was all I knew. <laughs> you know, I, and, and actually my years since graduation have been an effort to, to learn how to think like a non-lawyer. Not that I ever gave up these finely tuned analytic skills that are critical to what I've done and what I do. And no lawyer should ever give those skills up but to supplement them with other ways of being, to, in, to supplement them with something which isn't part of the law school training in the United States at least, which is what's now been labeled emotional intelligence. 
how to be aware and how to read our own emotions and the emotions of other people around us so that we can function more effectively in light of a fuller understanding of, our, of ourselves and of the people that we're dealing with. So you keep the old ways of thinking and, and add on to it a consciousness of your own rising anger, for example, and the way that that might be distorting the behaviors that you take. Or, this is if you're interviewing a client, for example, the sense that it's, you're, you're, you're a little annoyed with this client, whom you're committed to serve, after all. It's paying you, you in most cases, and you're committed to serve that client. But you find yourself with this feeling, why doesn't he get to the point? Why does he keep rambling with this, uh, with this <laughs> presentation of things that happen to be extremely important to him, but I know are of no legal significance, and he's spending time that I could be doing, making me spend time that I could use more productively otherwise. So when you see these emotions and you can say, oh yes, I see that arising. I'm not going to let it take me out of my commitment and my, my reason for being here. I'm just going to let it go and come back to being fully <coughs> present and listening to this person. Usually when people come to see a lawyer, they're not having a good day. They're not, they're, they're not coming to see you because something good has happened. Usually it's because something bad has happened. Or if it hasn't happened already, they see it coming down the road and they, wanna, they want your help in, in avoiding it. But in any case, they're full of anxiety and uncertainty of how to proceed. And they, they, want, you, they want you either to share in their problems or their discomfort or to take them over from them so that they can say, well, I've, I've consulted a professional, he's taking care of it, or she, and I could just uh, go on with my life. So these skills are the ones that we're going to be exploring today. And in order to strengthen that capacity to be in, a, in, in the moment, in that way, with full attention, without making uh, judgments of the other person, or making critical judgments of yourself, you're hearing a story and you're telling yourself, you know, you're new, I, I, you're saying to yourself, I'm new in the practice of law, and this, this person is asking me to take on something which is way beyond my capacity. How am I going to do it? I, I, I really, I feel like an imposter sitting here, as if I could provide this kind of support and help to this person in his or her troubles. So, the starting point for cultivating the full presence in the moment with an openness and receptivity to understanding fully what's going on around you begins with this process of meditation. Very simple. For some of you, again, it's, uh, this is nothing new. But for everyone, I think it, it doesn't hurt to just recapitulate the basics of meditation practice. So this is what I'd like you to do. I'll sound the bell once. I'll give you some instructions as we go along. And then I'll sound the bell three times, and we'll come back together for, for some discussion, and then proceed. I want to invite you to sit up in a posture which feels comfortable and alert, dignified, if you're comfortable shutting your eyes, I invite you to do that. Otherwise, you might just look down with a soft and unfocused gaze. Our emphasis during this period is uh, looking inward. You can rest your hands on your thighs or your knees or have them folded in your lap. Feet firmly on the floor. Feeling the weight of your body, the way it's supported by the chair, the way that your upright spine carries the weight of the shoulders and the upper body down into the pelvis where it's supported by the chair and passes through your feet on, planted on the floor. If there are any tense places in your body, Invite them to relax. Different people store their tension in the body in different ways. 
sometimes in the shoulders, sometimes in the pit of the stomach, sometimes in the hinges of the jaw. Relax the muscles in your face, the muscles around the sockets of your eyes. And connect with the breath. Bring your focused attention to each in-breath and each out-breath. Be aware of that point in time when the in-breath ends and the out-breath begins. And the out-breath ends and the in-breath being present in this moment with openness and receptivity and interest. Few of us take the time to observe the patterns of our thoughts, the feelings in our body. Meditation provides us with this opportunity. Perhaps a feeling of tiredness or boredom arises for you. You might feel guilty or embarrassed that uh, you've come to this lecture and now you're falling asleep. I invite you to let go of that impulse towards self-criticism and instead simply observe that you're feeling tired and then come back to the breath to the feeling of being fully embodied. <clears throat> and in the last minutes of our meditation period, bring up a feeling of gratitude. Gratitude to the people who organized this program. Gratitude to yourself for having made the time and taken the effort to explore the processes of your mind in a new way. <coughs> Gratitude to all the people in this room who have come together to support each other. In deepening their understanding of meditation and mindfulness and the ways of the human mind and heart. Gratitude.